So after the music, it's our uh, community moment. So this is the chance for one of our own community member to come up and then tell us their thoughts to uh, uh, the free thoughts. To so it could be a, uh, a book you read, a movie you watched, or if you just want to share with everyone your interest. So this is a good time to, um, uh, to share your experience. So uh, this time we have Lu Kina, uh, who is our veteran community moment speaker. So today he's going to um, talk about the 25-hour day. Please welcome Lu. I have found more ways to waste time than you can imagine. Is that better? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so, um, it's as though I have invented the 23-hour day. <laughs> All right, we're getting better. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, you can imagine how much I admire Lawrence Krauss, who is a physicist who apparently has invented the 25-hour day. Because I can't imagine how he has accomplished so much in a 24-hour day. So let me read you some stuff about uh, Dr. Krauss. Professor Lawrence M. Krauss is an internationally known theoretical physicist with a wide range of interests, including the interface between elementary particle physics and cosmology, where his studies include the early universe, the nature of dark matter, general relativity, and neutrino astrophysics. <laughs> he has investigated questions ranging from the nature of exploding stars to issues of the origin of all mass in the universe. He is known as an advocate of the public understanding of science of public policy based on sound empirical data, of scientific skepticism, and of science education, and works to reduce the influence of what he sees as superstition and religious dogma in popular culture. He was born in 1954 and grew up in Toronto, Canada. He received undergraduate degrees in math and physics at Carleton University, and his PhD in physics from MIT in 1982, then joined the Harvard Society of Fellows in the Faculty of the Departments of Physics and Astronomy at Yale as assistant professor, then associate professor. In 1993, he was named professor of physics, professor of astronomy, and chairman of the Department of Physics at Case Western Reserve University. During his 12 years there, he built up the department, which was ranked among the top 20 physics graduate research programs in the country. Among the major new initiatives he, in, he spearheaded include the creation of one of the top particle astrophysics experimental and theoretical programs in the U.S., and the creation of a groundbreaking, breaking, excuse me, groundbreaking master's program in physics entrepreneurship. In August 2008, Krauss took up his new post as foundation professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration and Physics Department and inaugural director of the Origins Program, that is Origins Project, at Arizona State University. As planned, Origins will become the National Center for Research and Outreach on Origins Issues, from the origins of the universe to human origins, to the origins of consciousness and culture. Professor Krauss is the author of over 300 scientific publications, as well as numerous popular articles on physics and astronomy. In 2001, the American Institute of Physics awarded Krauss the Andrew Jamat Award, given annually to a person who has made significant contributions to the cultural, artistic, or humanistic dimensions of physics. Previous awardees include Stephen Hawking. He has helped lead a national effort to defend the teaching of evolution in the public schools. His piece in the New York Times, followed by a public letter to Pope Benedict, helped to prompt a reevaluation of the Catholic Church's position on evolution. No small fee. 
He led the creation of an organization in Ohio which recruited and supported pre-science candidates to run for state school board against creationist candidates and spoke out and wrote extensively during the election campaign. All candidates recruited by this group help Ohio public, ed public education were elected and sometimes defeated candidates who outspent them by huge margins. In March 2008, Krauss and Richard Dawkins, another friend of ours, engaged in a public conversation at Stanford University on science and science education. And the video of their conversation and his video on the current state of cosmology presented at the AAI conference in October 2009 and produced by the Dawkins Foundation have become among the most watched on YouTube since it appeared in 2012. He has lectured to popular audiences at such places as the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, the National Museum of Natural History, and the Museum of Natural History in New York, and appears frequently on radio and television around the world, as well as being a regular contributor to various newspapers and magazines, including the New York Times. Phew, I get tired of just thinking about doing this much stuff. It would be fantastic, he writes, if science diminished the societal influence of religion. Religion encourages people to force the universe to conform to their beliefs. Science forces beliefs to conform to evidence of reality. That leads to much better policies for society. Professor Krauss is the author of many acclaimed popular books, including The Fifth Essence, The Search for Dark Matter in the Universe, which was named Astronomy Book of the Year by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and Fear of Physics, now translated into 12 languages. His book, Beyond Star Trek, appeared in November 1997 and has appeared in five foreign editions. Quintessence, The Mystery of the Missing Mass, a revision and update of The Fifth Essence, appeared in February 2000. In 2001, his award-winning book, Adam, that's A-T-O-M, you knew that, right? <laughs> Adam, an odyssey from the Big Bang to life on Earth and beyond, appeared. His next book, entitled Hiding in the Mirror, The Mysterious Allure of Extra Dimensions from Plato to String Theory and Beyond, an exploration of our fascination with the idea of extra dimensions in art, literature, and science. His book, A Universe from Nothing, Why There is Something Rather Than Nothing, with an afterword by Richard Dawkins, appeared in 2012 and has now been translated into 24 languages. His newest book, The Greatest Story Ever Told So Far, <laughs> uh, appeared in March of this year. Krauss is one of the few prominent scientists today to have actively crossed the chasm between science and popular culture. For example, besides his radio and television work, Krauss has performed with the Cleveland Orchestra, narrating Gustav Holt's The Plants at the Blossom Music Center in the most highly attended concert at that venue. Every atom in your body, he says, comes from a star that exploded. And the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than the atoms in your right hand. It really is the most poetic thing I know about physics. We are all stardust. We couldn't be here if stars hadn't exploded because the elements, all the things that matter for evolution, weren't created at the beginning of time. They were created in the nuclear furnaces of stars. The only way they could get into our bodies is if the stars were kind enough to explode. <laughs> so forget Jesus. The stars died so we could be here. <laughs> In 2013, he starred in a new full-length feature film documentary called The Unbelievers which follows Krauss and colleague Richard Dawkins around the world as they discuss science and reason. The film had its world premiere at the Hot Docs, that's D-O-C-S, 
International Film Festival in Toronto in April 2013. You all know that it's now an oasis in Toronto, right? Yeah. yeah. A number of celebrities appear in the film for which Krauss was the executive producer. I have no idea how he finds the time to do this. I really don't. He and his wife Nancy, who was from Australia, escaped Arizona in summer to spend some time at the Mount Stromlo Observatory in Stromlo, Australia, near Canberra. In his spare time, little joke there, in his spare time when he is not writing or lecturing, he enjoys scuba diving, fly fishing, and mountain biking. He has taken part in many public deba debates on religion. He argued in one debate that the laws of physics allow for the universe to be created from nothing. Question, what would be the characteristics of a universe that was created from nothing just with the laws of physics and without any supernatural shenanigans, he asked. The characteristics of the universe, he answered, would be precisely those of the ones we live in. Thank you. <laughs>